Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I am Oravana contributor. Hi, I'm Travis, and I'm also an Oravana contributor. In this video, we gave a presentation for Co-Creator Circle. It, Minakshi invited us to Co-Creator Circle, and we essentially gave an introduction and overview of Oravana and the work we've been doing together. Uh, so we'd like to thank Minakshi, and you can visit Co-Creator Circle at cocreatorcircle.com. Yeah, we hope you enjoy it. Welcome everyone to this session of Oravana with Travis and Elizabeth Grant. And I'm so happy that you all are here at uh, Co-Creator Circle because one of the feelings that I've always had, and I think many of you also do, that we not only affect our own life, but we also affect the lives of everyone around us. And that together we are actually co-creating this, uh, this world. So I would like to introduce Travis and Elizabeth Grant to those of us who may not have met them before. I love that they have this beautiful vision that they realize not only that the world is changing, but that they desire to participate in this constructive change. And like they say that we work towards the emergence of community on this planet so that we may all have the opportunity to participate in a living system that facilitates the fulfillment of all beings. A beautiful, beautiful message. And I think that's one of the things that drew me into it. Also, uh, why I wanted to have you here, uh, Travis and Elizabeth, is because I saw not only that yeah. you have this yeah. idea, but yeah. also that you have actually uh, shown it. You have actually uh, got such a beautiful plan together. So without further ado, over to you, Travis and Elizabeth. Elizabeth, do you want to go first? Uh, hi, greetings, everyone. Uh, so I am Elizabeth. Travis and I, we are in Brazil at the moment. Uh, and we have been work uh, to, you know, develop like these standards and uh, with architecture drawings also. So, yeah. Thanks. So yeah, uh, I've been working on the Orvana project for about 10 years. Um, Elizabeth joined me about two years ago and has begun working on the architecture section because we're the Orvana project essentially exists to uh, envision and engineer the transition to a different configuration of society. So a lot of people over over the decade. Oh, oh, Hi, Nicole. I'll have to see who is because I'm not going to someone. Give me a minute. Can you make out who is who? Is? But these ideas. So to continue on, Oravana has been in development uh, for at least the last 10 years. But the idea is that Oravana has integrated and unified into an information system that would allow us to live on this planet in a more fulfilling manner together uh, without having markets, without having states, and without having socioeconomic and competing classes has been in, uh, in the works for a long period of time. There have been many people who have spoken about this idea quite eloquently before and have spoken about the problems with the configuration of society that we presently have. Um, so, uh, so Oravana essentially has, uh, has developed a set of socio-technical standards. I'll give a little bit of a background before we go into the presentation about how I, uh, I came to work on uh, this project and the deliverables that the project uh, has published and is continuing to work on. So I began thinking about how we could all live in a greater state of fulfillment together on this planet. And I initially thought that the way to bring more people People to this realization that we have the potential on the planet right now to live this way was developed to develop an educational institution. 
So I began working on the structure of that educational institution, the organizational structure, and thinking about curriculum. Of course, the the, the base of any uh, any educational institution or any education whatsoever is uh, a set of documentation, an information set from which curriculum can be developed, and we can all all learn about that system together and the operation of that system. So I began looking for the information out there, the documentation out there that would essentially uh, explain to me this system that uh, other people had spoken about for a long time, and I wanted to develop uh, a, a platform to bring awareness to the world. And I found that the information wasn't out there. People had spoken about the uh, the concept in very vague terms. There were some principles. There was some basic information. There was a lot of discussion of transition, but there was le very little discussion of the socio-technical operation of a system that would work well for all of humanity and would work without trade, would work without coercion and would work without socioeconomic competing classes. So uh, I took a step back because how can you develop the educational platform for this type of system when you don't even have the documentation for this type of system? And again, all technical societies operate based upon this type of documentation. Uh, so uh, any technological society requires uh, to operate at scale, requires socio-technical documentation in order to operate. And that, op that socio-technical documentation, those standards or policies, they have different names depending upon where you are or the, your professional context. If you're working with states, uh, then they have policies and they have laws um, and they have uh, organizational documentation. They have constitutions and all of this w exists as and within standards. Um, and so uh, then you have the technical standards. Of course, those are produced by the ISO, the IEEE, a variety of different organizations out there produce technical standards. Um, Everything from architecture, uh, you have more simplistic standards like bioconstruction to electrical engineering, uh, to the integration of these systems and the interoperability of these systems. So I took a step back and began uh, thinking about the configuration of a new type of society, a, a, a different type of society where we didn't have a lot of the problems and uh, harmful incentives that we have today, and how would that work? And uh, we eventually came up with uh, the fact that, or the idea, the concept that all configurations of societies have four primary systems or societal system standards or socio-technical standards. They all have, uh, and in a moment we'll get to the VR system. Um, oh, do you want to see him? See him. So we actually have a VR experience and Elizabeth is putting on the VR headset right now. Uh, here, let me unplug that. And then here you can actually walk around in this VR. So Elizabeth can show us the models as we're talking because in order to bring more, now that we've uh, sufficiently, uh, not sufficiently because they are living docu documents and they will continue to be developed as long as humanity continues to uh, more greatly understand itself and the world around it. But we can now give people uh, both a, a, a visual uh, experience of the concept of operation of this type of society in uh, 2D and 3D in VR. But in the very near future, uh, I think as we work together on this type of uh, environment, because this type of environment, this type of society includes four systems, like every configuration of society, um, uh, but the subsystems are configured differently depending upon the type of or type of society you're describing. But the type of society we live in now is a market state. It has a market, it has trade, and uh, it has states. And that uh, type of society is a specific configuration of these four systems, a specific configuration configuration of the social system as Elizabeth is presenting here. Oh, you just need to keep your head a little bit more. Um, there we go. Uh, a, a specific configuration of the social system, a specific configuration of the decision system. Every configure, every type of society has a uh, decision system. And a lot of people sometimes get this confused because when we're talking about economics, an economic system at a higher level is a decision system. It's simply decisioning about the acquisition and transformation into resource, into uh, needed goods and services. The
the acquisition of resources and their transformity. Uh, we're talking about social decision. We're talking about material because we live in a material, spatial, physical object environment where we can interact and that environment physically interacts with our vessels, our bodies. And then we talk about a lifestyle and the type of lifestyle that people have within this society. And again, this is a unified information system that feeds back on our life. We have a di social direction. The social system is like a navigational system. Uh, so it has a direction and orientation and an approach. And all of that creates a set of data, knowledge, and values that feed into a decision system. And that decision system resolves to changes in the material environment. And our current, and see, what Elizabeth sh is showing you here is all of the different ways that we can represent this information system, but they're all the same. They all have the same fundamental systems. This is the con like the a lot of people look at uh, concept models and unless they've had training in concept models, they become somewhat confused. Uh, the first concept model that I learned of was the TCPI pr P protocol. And it's the it's a very uh, simple layered reference uh, uh, concept model of the protocol that basically uh, organizes the entire internet. And so uh, it's if you look up that model, you can see very simple concept model. And this concept model is the foundation of our Internet. Now, we can do the same thing. We can model out the concept of operation of a different type of society, a society directed toward human need fulfillment, a, a society directed toward ecological regeneration, and a society uh, oriented toward the, the, the optimized uh, potential and fulfillment of every individual together on this planet. And we can do that first by identifying the top level systems and then engineering the design of those systems, thinking about how those systems could be configured in an optimal way to meet our intention, our goals, our objectives, and then our requirements. And from there, we use we we uh we contribute to habitat service teams that use common heritage resources and working groups that work on standards because we're trying to remove or have on a project in part in order to develop this type of society has had to remove a lot of the uh, market state conditioning and conditions that are ubiquitously present in our current society and then many people think are just normal common natural and yet are somewhat of an aberration when it comes to our human need fulfillment at a global and individual level. So the first thing we have had to do is we have had to model out the information systems. And there are many different ways to uh, to look at this, this model. And so Elizabeth has been showing front view, side views, breakout views, layered reference views, all different types of views on a similar information system. And this information system organizes our data and understanding about our reality, about ourselves, about our universe, and about the world we all live together within. So uh, here we can see a breakdown of uh, the model, leading a breakdown of the physical and informational model in 3D. At the top, we have the planet. Uh, of course, you also have the solar system and the universe that we all live within and all live with on this one planet. Then we have the unified societal standard. Now, I said that there every uh, every configuration of society, whether it is the market state, which was uh, which has a different uh, description and explanation for its operation than a community configuration, is composed of four systems. But there are two other documents that essentially are necessary to fully explain the entire system. That would be an overview document, uh, necessarily, like an abstract document to any form of uh, appropriate academic or scientific literature. And then we would have a project plan. Now, this project Project plan in community because we're dealing with a unified information system and we're dealing with global resources that are held as the common heritage of all requires some sort of project plan. Some people get concerned when we talk about this and they say, well, this is going to be restrictive on my freedoms in the village that I live in. But this project plan allows for freedom and flexibility and customization of habitats to the local population. 
So in that sense, it's actually uh, creating a greater state of efficiency and freedom for individuals because it allows individuals to live in customized, ha customized habitats and it accounts for that. The project plan for community also must, uh, must include a transition because we're transitioning from a our current configuration of society. Uh, some people refer to that as capitalism. Uh, more technical language is uh, the market state, but whatever one chooses to refer it refer to it as, to a, a community type configuration. Oh, love, can we go back to that model just a sec? I'm going to keep going down. Yes. Um, and so uh, then, of course, in order to reach our material, uh, our actual material habitat service system, we have to take decisions. So all of these systems connect to a central pillar, that blue turquoise blue central pillar. Oh, can you a bit more still? Thanks. Yeah, but a bit more still. There's a bit shaky. Thank you, love. Um, and so the next, excellent. So this is uh, the decision system. So the decision, a lot of people, when they begin looking at the standards, um, they tend to skip the decision system, system. But the decision system is extremely important to answer many questions people have about how uh, this configuration of society is resolved. Many people say, how does the economy work? And then, you know, there's an entire system that describes that, but they skip that system because it doesn't use the word economic in the title. Instead, it uses the word decision. So the way in which we arrive at decision is decisions, the, the way we, which we arrive at solutions, excuse me, through decisioning uh, is through a process of socialist economic calculation and uh, a parallel inquiry process, a parallel inquiry process that includes habitat service team members, includes essentially work in that's in this configuration of society and work in this configuration of society removes a lot of, as I was speaking of before, removes, removes a lot of the abstractions from the market state. And so you have individuals on habitat teams working in habitats and you have working groups working on information, maybe discovering new knowledge or working on the standards themselves or working on the application of those standards to the material environment. And then uh, habitat service team members operating in the material environment, like we have habitat service team members operating now, we just use different role um, identifiers and role names. We have the plumber, we have uh, the manufacturer, we have um, the medical technician. All of these are simply in a community configuration of society, habitat service team members operating in a habitat or maybe operating between habitats. And then you have working group members, like you have working group members now who professionally work on standards at the state and corporate or commercial levels. And so here we have a decision system. And so this decision system is important and includes economic calculation, a specific type of economic calculation, not market economic calculation. Um, it, in, it includes uh, socialist economic calculation, essentially, which uh, if you look up the two primary uh, mathematicians are Leontif and Kantorovich, who essentially developed this type of math. Mathematics. And so we go from uh, decisioning uh, down to the three layers of the habitat service system with the map underneath, with that site map underneath. Uh, essentially the color model of the city underneath. And so these are the three habitat service systems in a community configuration of society. And these uh, habitat service systems are linked to human needs. So the first one is life support. Uh, these are categories of human needs. And these categories are required in order to run the economic calculation, which is above. Uh, and then of course you have the social system above that, which uh, basically uh, provides the uh, 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 requirement of and uh, necessary deliverable tasks for project management or game project coordination, uh, project coordination requires. So these three have services life support, then technology support, and then exploratory support. And then for each of those systems, you have subsystems. Those subsystems are not only uh, not only exist at an information system level, but also a habitat level. People are in, uh, people are working in the habitat on water uh, operations, are working in the habitat on architectural operations, on medical operations, on life support operations, subsystems. And sometimes they're working specifically on that system 
or and sometimes they're working as part of an intersystem team, a habitat intersystem team. Uh, the priority for that often is there's an incident, then that um, then the habitat service team members come together. Although in other operations, they're intersystems as well. Love, let's go to the center and let me just explain. Yeah, the concept at a high level. One of the most important things that one needs to know uh, to kind of understand what we're describing here. Yeah, go. Go ahead a little bit more further in. Right, let's look at this model. So again, talking about concept models, a lot of this people uh, dismiss because they say, oh, it's very conceptual, it's theoretical, it's not practical. So I'd first like to address that because that's a... Uh, uh, Um, I think you got muted, Travis. Oh, thank you. I'm I'm unmuted now. So uh, anything that we're going to bring about at any sort of complexity scale, we first need to model out first, especially if we're working with a society, because there are a lot of things, a lot of risks, obviously, there are a lot of things that could be unsafe for people. So modeling it out first at the conceptual, conceptual level before even considering transition is important. A lot of uh, transition actions and proposals in the past have failed because there wasn't the engineered vision, like if you're building a house, in fact, we're building architecture, we're building uh, behaviors, we're building so many things in this new environment that it's important to model it out first. Simply, if we look at the past and transitions that attempts at transition uh, that have happened in the past and have failed quite spectacularly. So uh, the first thing we do is we look and we explain what a concept model is. On a long, cold, lonely night. Uh, just me. a minute, please. Yeah, can, okay. I'm I'm just gonna do. Uh, please don't let anyone else in. Okay. Uh, have you been? Uh yes, I let some okay, people. Okay, please in. don't let anyone else in. Oh, you've been putting them in the waiting room. I see. Yeah, no, okay. I've been removing them, and they keep coming back. And okay. Different names. Please let okay. no one else in. Thanks. I'll do that. Yeah. Excellent. So, um, so. So we can all essentially look at, recognize, and come to a greater understanding together, essentially an alignment, maybe in operation, an agreement of a model that works well for all of us, a model that we can use to help facilitate the fulfillment of all of us, and into which we put information and we integrate information, and out of which comes a better uh, life for us as individuals and us together in a community configuration of society. So uh, one other thing that I need to clear up here using the term community, when people use the word community, most people in modern society, they're re re uh, referring to something much, um, much different or at least somewhat different than what we in the Oravana project and how we use the term community. We're specifically referring to a configuration of society. I think people imagine that. Imagine all the amazing things that this sort of configuration of society gives them in at a smaller scale, maybe in their, their activity groups or maybe in the eco-village they live in or maybe in their family. But in, at the Oravana project, when we use the word community, we're actually referring to a configuration of society, not all these other things that have those good feelings and have that sense of community, but are not actually community in the way that we use that language, because the way that we use that language, it refers to a configuration of society. So it would be technically incorrect when people refer to their racial communities or their uh, meetup group communities or, you know, there are all these other communities, that's fine, they, they can refer to them, but in the technical documentation, right, we are referring to a specific configuration of society. So we do differentiate that. No problem to refer to all those things that people love, you know, as community, but in the documentation, it just needs to be clarified that when we're using the word community, we're referring to a specific configuration and not the configuration right now that people have those other communities. Um, so this is just an important point. So again, what we're doing is we're transitioning 
from a specific configuration of society, a market to state type. And this is why it's so important to get these terms right to a different configuration of society, because sometimes it obfuscates when people use the word community to refer these all, all these other great things that they love and are wonderful for their well-being. Uh, and they use the word community to refer to what you know, all those great things are not at just their individual or familial or just a small group level to refer to the configuration of an entire type of society. It sort of diminishes it and it can can lead to some sort of, it can lead to a, a, an initial difficulty understanding. Then again, it can also help when people uh, see the similarities. So uh, here we have another configuration of the habitat. This is more of a... Uh, yeah, here we go. So that this is more of a market state configuration of a habitat love. So where we have the economic uh, national security state. So this is a contrast. This is a market state view of the habitat uh, or of a uh, partial habitat part. Let's stay on the left and I can just show this. It represents a different configuration of society. You have states that have their own economic security system. Sometimes those states enter into unions and then they have their own economic security. You have the bureaucratic system that runs uh, and coerces uh, behaviors within that system. And then you have the operation of life support because every configuration of society has to have some sort of life support. Um, and you have protection of uh, protection of the system and then protection of the ideology uh, in life support because that's that's a connected with people's lives and their well-being and their ability to even list live if they don't go into a state of poverty um, but you have to also have the other ones which are common to you know which are obviously common to community too like uh, energy and power production or architecture or medical or recycling and waste management so um, and then of course you have resource flows between life support and uh, then between the bureaucratic system and um, then between uh, the national economic state. So you can see the inefficiencies. And so this model sort of, see, you sort of see gaps. There are gaps in the, the, tr the, the flow of resources for all the waste that occurs in the market state. So here's a, a more of a community configuration. We have a 3D world up at the top, and uh, that's our biosphere that we all live or could live in harmony together with. And then you can see the cities, I think, in this. Uh, yeah, you can see the cities, these integrated city systems. Some people refer to these as total city systems. Uh, again, dealing with terminology, the terminology that people use today in the market state is somewhat different than the, terminal, the technical terminology we use in the documentation. Uh, the technical term terminology for these eco-villages, these towns, these population centers, these cities, they all are AKAs of also known as a habitat service system. So they are essentially service systems where we have uh, our needs for life support, technology support, and exploratory met at most at uh, as local a level as possible. But we also have a net network of these uh, habitat service systems where we share access to global resources to meet our individual needs for life technology and exploratory support. There are different ways to show this model. This is a one layered reference model. This is another uh, broke breakout model. And so you can see the different subsystems. Then you can also see the operational processes. There are three primary operational processes here. Uh, the three primary are strategic and then operations and then incident or emergency. But there are actually five levels of operational process. And if in life support, you look at the different colors there. First, you see emergency or um, that's like a serious incident. Then you have say, critical and then recovery and then maintenance and operations and then strategic preservation planning or planning of these customized habitats because these are uh, master planned habitats. They are habitats that and they, they can be customized in the future. Different habitats will have potentially different times for uh, their updating or their modification. Um, and those are typically done in zones, whereas some zones are more fixed in the habitat and other zones are like a cultivation or an aesthetic part of the habitat might be updated by the local population of the habitat more regularly. So this is one uh, version of a habitat that we have been working on. Now, I just have to mention all of the other projects working out there on our common direction. And because we're currently looking at the material system and these master site plans for the habitat, I'll mention some of the other projects out there who are noteworthy and have 
done great work and are still doing great work. First is the Venus Project, who has helped uh, our direction become so widely known and um, have done great work in, in, uh, in facilitating an understanding of this direction and also their architecture. So Jacques Fresco, Roxanne Meadows, and all others who have been working at the Venus Project. Then we have One Community, and One Community has been doing an excellent job. One Community Global has been doing an excellent job of uh, um, master planning, uh, open source, and free duplicable share, uh, low tech, uh, mostly bioconstruction, but also using some modern technology, uh, eco villages. And all of those are available on their website. This is uh, architecture that Elizabeth and me to a lesser extent has been working on. And so this is done in AutoCAD and Revit. And so this is one configuration of a rural environment. And this rural environment is primarily, this is about 10 hectares. This uh, rural environment is primarily dedicated to uh, a type of agriculture known as restoration agriculture, regenerative agriculture, um, has syntropic agriculture, uh, has permaculture, has many names known to it, but uh, sometimes permaculture doesn't include animals. This does include animals, and so there's a rotation of animals in a silvopasture type environment. This is all described in the uh, current material system. Uh, the next version of which will be even uh, more greatly updated. So the current material system is divided into two systems. There are four system standards, social, and I'll repeat this so that we kind of, because uh, it's good to repeat some of this information, social decision, material, lifestyle. And the material system, just like the project plan, has grown so large that we had to separate it into two systems, the material system and a habitat service system. The habitat service system describes and explains the habitat. And so one of the habitat service systems is architecture and another is cultivation. These are service systems in the habitat. Love it's me. Oh, she's uh sorry, my she's just taking it off. It's hurting her eyes, but she's putting it back on. Um, and so um, yeah, so restoration agriculture essentially. Some habitats might be more technologically advanced and use um use more technology in their cultivation system, but it's possible for all habitats to, to some degree to include restorative agriculture practices that include plants, animals, fungi, uh, a natural ecology. Um, you okay, love? Oh, she's a bit. So what happens with VR for a lot of people is it can get a bit, uh, can, should we change this? Uh, do you want to, do you want me to? No? Okay. Uh, here, I can do this and I can walk around like this. So yeah, I understand. So uh, Elizabeth, do you want to talk about this um, here? I'll walk around and, and direct us to the uh, first habitat that we have been working on, this rural, primarily uh, restorative agriculture habitat. Um, it's really just one version of habit uh, habitat. We can begin networking the on the. We can begin networking these and working within these is as as we would work in community, in working groups, and in habitat service teams. So I'll turn it over to Elizabeth, who's been working on this project, this sub project because um, because there are many different configurations of, in, in, uh, of habitat in community. And so Elizabeth will uh, can talk about this configuration. See? And I'll, I'll direct us to the images. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I just stopped it uh, to walk with VR because as it can be, uh, for me, it can be like challenge sometimes, like too much in information and like the, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, in terms of the habitat configuration, um, today we have like two configuration. One like high tech, like the Travis is showing to us. So in this habitat, we have uh, around eight, nine houses. Uh, and we have two types. We have like a big house with um, around 700 square meters uh, with two floors. And we have like a small one with around uh, 200 square meters, just one floor, this uh, type one. And in this habitat, uh, we have like some, you know, major proposals like to agroforest, uh, agroforest, uh, biodigester, uh, banana circuit, just like to, uh, in terms of, um, Saneamento básico. Uh, basic sanitation. Basic sanitation, yeah. And we have like composting. And so uh, the intention is like to create self-sufficient habitats uh, where we can test like these standards in one like prototype. 
So we are in this in this moment uh, to calculate like small um, scale to in some point in time to really calculate like a, a series. So we are in this stage. Um, and what more? Uh, we have like this this indigenous configuration. Yeah, this is like a low tech uh, proposal. Uh, this is was inspiring like a uh, crow village. I want like um, this opportunity and recommend yesterday we post uh, the first mini documentary when we explain uh, this this proposal. Uh, this is inspired in the crow village, one um, indigenous tribe here in Brazil. They organize this themselves uh, with like circular way like yeah. this. And we are proposing um, a sustainable habitat. Travis and I, we visited in May this year and they are living like in poverty and like really, you know, bad conditions. So we have like some proposal to improve the way they live today. Uh, so this is like one, one inspiration. Can you talk about some of the big, because there are, have yeah, sure. Uh, maybe I can come yeah. come back to the BR and you. Are you sure? Yeah, I think I am. Okay. I recovered a bit. Okay. Here, uh, let's. Now we now we're going to look at as Elizabeth has been saying, we have uh, different configure. You know, in community, not only us but other people as well are working on these different configurations of a habitat service system, and uh, we can network these habitat service systems. And uh, within the network, we can share resources and access to global human fulfillment. So there are uh, Elizabeth has shown you some of the ones we've been working on. There have been other people like Jacques Fresco, uh, who if we look to uh, just behind you into your right love yeah right there at this city yep so uh this this one has was inspired by jacques fresco and this was created in a simulation engine and this is an entire city uh separated into different zones like we currently have the market state material environment separated into zones but you see the zoning here is slightly different here you have uh dwellings you do have production maker workspaces you have high density dwellings low density dwellings you have recreation all within the perimeter of the habitat and even within the perimeter uh, in this circular configuration, the outer circular around here is a restorative uh, cultivation belt where we rotate animals within a silvopasture agroforestry environment, producing an abundance of food, fuel, and fiber. When Elizabeth's talking about that other configuration, that um, the rural configuration that you saw, not the uh, not the indigenous configuration, although that too, but the other rural configuration, these configurations are designed because what can we produce an abundance of through restorative agriculture, we can produce an abundance of food, fuel and fiber. Of course, modern society requires uh, mining, requires minerals, requires a lot of other materials that you don't want to uh, conduct the operations of within the perimeter of the habitat. Um, so that would be done outside the perimeter of the habitat, but would still be part of the operation and maintenance and even incidents and strategic preservation uh, part of our habitat. So you can network these as, as Elizabeth was showing, showing in some of these other models. And so in this network, you can actually have the animals circulating around all of this land, helping to restore the soil. It's one of the most efficient ways of uh, restoring and recuperating soil is mi mixing agroforestry techni techniques with the rotation. The proper appropriate uh, grazing and not overgrazing of animals and uh, redoing the terrain of the environment in order to make it uh, to make it hold and infiltrate water more effectively. So this, uh, and you can see here on the planet on the earth, we can begin creating these environments based upon a unified information standard around the world because everything is open source and free shared, like exactly like one community is doing. And one community is developing these sort of lower tech uh, systems. So if we go back to the center, love, can we go back to the center where I'd like to introduce people? I to the uh, to the two concepts that one really needs to be aware of in order to understand this direction. 
Yes. So uh, we have an information system and then we have a material environment that in which we live. And that information system can align more greatly with the reality of our material environment and align more greatly with our knowledge of what creates a uh, more fulfilled individual and more social environment or less. So the two primary, if you're looking at it from a reality perspective, like a axiomatic perspective, there is information. And so we have to, we have to, uh, we have a rope here with uh, two threads. One of the threads is information and the other thread is materiality. I don't think anybody would deny that we're in material bodies and we have material needs and we interact, interface with us through some sort of spatial environment and that we're conscious beings uh, and that information is an axiom as well. So we have information concepts and uh, those concepts form meanings in our mind. And then we have materiality. So in modeling these, we have uh, concept models, a concept ta taxonomy, and you can see here a 3D visualization of a concept model. And then over to the right, we have object models. And uh, uh, yep, and then to the right, um, uh, yeah, just a little, we have, an, we have here an object model of um, a part of a train. So uh, the uh, power part of the train. So yeah, we have object models and these object models can be exploded and then you can, uh, you can, you can focus down deeper and deeper into you know, the elements that compose uh, any individual object. And then you can explode, you can, you can go at, to a higher, a, a more aggregate, aggregate level and then you have the actual uh, object itself, in this case, a train. So uh, then over here, we have uh, on the left-hand side, we have decisioning, and uh, this is a model conveyed in the decision system, and this is part of uh, economic calculation and parallel inquiry. And so you have, uh, you have tables and matrices, which are calculated based upon human requirements, objectives, and uh, access to resources, and then production of resources in a manner that's most efficient and uh, uses those resources with the least amount of waste. So that decision system here, you can see on this 3D model of the real world community information systems model, and uh, you can see that that matrix on the right integrating with the decision system. And then if we were to look at this like a flow model, that blue flows into the green, that green flows into our lifestyle and that lifestyle flows into our uh, social information system and our own ways in which we perceive the world around us and are then capable of navigating either to, uh, to each of our benefit or to each of our detriment. Um, in the real world. So if we look to the left, love, if we, uh, yeah, so this is, uh, again, we, all of this can be represented in different ways. Um, some people get uh, one way of the represent representation of the system more quickly than another way of the representation. So here, that model on the right there of the two models of the high level organizational structure of community. Uh, first, you have a map essentially, because what do, what does everything require before you build anything on, on land or on landscape? It requires a map. So we have the map and then we have uh, the information system like the geographical, geospatial and conceptual information system underlying this. This is just a high level, you know, ideal model. And then to the right, we have uh, the, to the, sorry, to the, the right model. Um, yeah, we have another version of the real world community model right there. Yep. And this is just a different, uh, different way of perceiving the real world community model. They represent the same information, but in sl from slightly different views. It's like when you're in a, a modeling program and you look at the same model from a different perspective. So again, what is our goal here? What can we accomplish if we work together? And then I'll open it up to to questions and we can take you around if you'd like for a second. So frames per second can sometimes make people a little bit upset. You can actually download this model, this uh, VR, uh, if you have an Oculus Rift and put this VR experience on your Oculus Rift at a lower setting because it's been exported from Unreal Engine. But if you'd like the, uh, the game files or the files themselves, just ask us and we can send it to you and then you can run it in Unreal Engine and then experience this for yourself. So uh, I guess, what else? I think, uh, yeah, I'll just talk to a little bit to uh, the fact that, it, you know, it matters what we do on a daily basis, whether or not we will see a planet with less poverty and greater 
a greater flourishing and flow in individuals' lives uh, in the near term. And it really does matter what we do on an individual basis uh, daily, but it also matters, um, yeah, it matters whether or not we work daily on this direction and it matters what we do. I can't tell you the number of projects I regularly meet and they're working on this direction, but they haven't developed the standards or they don't have any documentation. And that's been a big, uh, I, you know, I've, it's been, it's been a big sort of issue for me at least, um, because I, I understand that in order to develop something like this, we have to have the documentation. And there are projects out there working on this documentation. There are pro many projects that start that, uh, that aren't working on this documentation. And we could, if we could work on this documentation together, if we could work together as a group on this direction, things would advance so much more quickly. And just remember the way in which we work in community is on working groups and locally on habitat teams. It's not that difficult. And so if we're not working together, at least on uh, working groups, or at least making our content available so that other working groups, whether they be scientific, academic, or and projects like ours, um, then uh, maybe our direction is a little bit farther away. People sort of ask me, you know, when do you think we'll, there's a lot of content on Oravana. So um, we have, you know, we have all of the standards that you see, and then we have 1, more than 1,800 models that describe the concept of operation of this type of system. We have a lot of stuff. How long will it take for us to begin living even at a local level in this type of society. At a local level, we can begin living in a transition type society within like two to three years with uh, sufficient funding and a little bit more development behind us in terms of the material system. Um, and then we also need to begin working on the economic calculation software system and logistics system. Uh, if we don't begin, and that's at a local level, when will we transition within the region of a state or at the state or uh, union level of states? That's probably anywhere from 50 to 200 years away, I would estimate. Uh, with the way that I see people working right now, starting projects and then not having the documentation and then not working on projects and then it just being very difficult to work, um, right now I, I see it as 50 to 200 years away. Uh, so that's, again, my opinion. That That's just my opinion. Don't Elizabeth, how, how long do you think it might take us to begin transitioning and living in this type of, uh, this type of configuration of society, this community type configuration? Um, so it depends. Um, for me, uh, the point is like we, we need help people uh, to be aware in terms of this proposal. So we have, you know, um, the big work is like to share and like to communicate with people. With that, we can... I, Sometimes I am more positive, so I think with a lot of people and uh, organize it, of course, we can like transition quickly, you know, because we have so many information and we have the condition for that. But again, we need like organization and like, yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I, I think... about politics? Do you want to talk about politics? Yeah, I think uh, the politics politics is important here because with like politics we can expand and like uh, shortly we can have like a large scale with implementing this proposal um but yeah so i don't know with like the right politics and with the right people with the right documentation and the power we can transition in, uh i don't know uh 50 years uh or more or less, I don't know. I I definitely don't know. Depends, uh, you know, w what we are doing today. Yeah, it depends upon what we are doing today. There is a transition uh, plan in the tra in the project execution document, which is the project plan became so lar large it was separated into two documents. And so the project execution uh, essentially includes a transition plan. That a transition plan includes like a transition of uh, the mass population, the consciousness and awareness of the mass population. It also includes a transition of the market, and it includes a transition of the state. It includes what we might need to 
amplify, what we might need to reduce, and the strategies to get from where we currently are to where we will be. This is the first uh, version of this document. So this document is, you could consider it draft, although it has been published. Um, but I would look at it as a draft document just in the initial stages. So again, and, and it's also uh, a, a highly um, real-time living as it were it will be in the future because, uh, you know, we're dealing with situations and the application of this new way of living to uh, different situations and the transition of those different situations. Some people have more of a condition to facilitate to uh, transition to this way of living, and some people, because of their environments, have less of a condition. So, I go ahead. Yeah, no, I think we can. Um, yeah, I would like to ask you all uh, how was like this presentation with this VR presentation lines like. Is our first experiment with that, and yeah, we would like, you know, would like the feedback. Feedback and any questions if you have questions, and we can show you around the VR uh, experience a little bit more. Again, in the future, we'll have a simulation, or some organization will out, have, out there will have a simulation of the material environment, which necessarily includes the information experience of living in one of these habitat service systems, maybe a city, maybe a low tech. Some people are imagining. Uh, uh, at first, uh, just having a room, and in that room, you have access. You, you have access via, you know, a screen to uh, viewing other parts of the habitat and um, interfacing with the information systems and information flows of the habitat. But in the future, at some point in time, we will have a, a full-on virtual reality experience simulating one of these habitats, or eventually a network of habitats, and that I think will bring a greater awareness to our direction than anything else because it'll. Give Give people a first-hand experience. We're also thinking about starting up an educational uh, platform because it, this documentation is, uh, you know, it, it is a completely way, a completely different way of viewing society than the way we have been programmed, uh, both a programming of ourselves and others programming us, and the way it's uh, our, this programming is reinforced in modern society. So uh, the, the information can be very dense at times, um, but it doesn't, you know, there are visualizations for almost everything. A lot of people forget that there are models that visualize almost everything, and you can go on the website and uh, type in the name of those models uh, or the name, a concept, and you can search for that. Just remember that on the website, there are two search boxes. One of them searches the models and the other searches the whole website. So just be aware of the, the two search boxes on some of the pages. So I'd like to open it up to questions and maybe we'll take you around the VR experience if uh, any of the models answer your question. Our comments in general, we are, we are here. I think I would thank you so much, uh, Travis and Elizabeth. This was really, I think it was very dense, lots and lots of information. Um, uh, and I feel that the question that you had, um, Elizabeth, I know you posed two, but the one that I would really like to start with, if everybody is willing to come on video and audio, is um, when do you feel this transition can take place? I think both Travis and Elizabeth uh, uh, spoke about that. And one of, well, one of the things that I have in my mind is because when I was sharing this with people, uh, people have, uh, all of us, even me, I think of it, do I even like living in a physical gated community? You know, uh, how, how comfortable do I feel with living in community? And I think this is really the, the crux of it. How comfortable are human beings with being together? with being able to communicate with one another. But what I like is that in, in what you have shown, there's a way of being together. And yet, like you were saying, Travis, that you could also be a little separate. I know Maria is writing a few things. I would love it if you came and spoke them, uh, Maria. Would you like to? And Sherry also. Yeah, please, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yes, of course. Can you hear me? I'm not sure if you can hear me. We can. Oh, yes. And we can hear you. Too? Okay. Yes. But anyways, um, thank you so much. Yes, I was thinking, you know, a lot about how we are definitely in a transition. <clears throat> not a lot of people are not aware of this, but I feel in tagging along from what Minakshi was saying, 
um, <clears throat> that once we really face the, the big problems, you know, a lot of people are going to rush in. <laughs> so um, it's like, like what you guys have is really very futuristic. For some is possibly like super futuristic, but it's, it's uh, definitely where we're going to have to head towards to because of what's going on. And I feel when we, when we are in a situation that we really are facing the problems like, you know, food shortages or water shortage or, you know, then it's gonna move us very quickly towards finding some solutions, no? Um, I feel the information was a lot also. Um, I, I will uh, look into it because I know you have it. But for me, it's like the first take in of the information and then I have to review it and read it. And then start, things start to click and, and kind of uh, assimilate it, no? Uh, but really, wow, congratulations. Congratulations. I, uh, I know like I was saying the Transition Town Movement is a movement that I've been following for a long time. And what they do, I don't know if you're familiar with them, you, you might be, is kind of organizing with the resources that we already have in the community. So if someone has a bigger garden, like Menachi, for example, we can have that to be our food source, one of our food source uh, to, to have a garden and things like that, no? Which is starting with what we have and kind of organize with what we have already. So I feel to answer the question is that we might transition into something like that first, you know, and that we might even see it in our lifetime for sure. Like we use the resources that we have, we start like a base model. And when we start living in that way, we're also realistically going to know exactly what we face because right now we can predict, okay, how, how we're gonna go around having boundaries with each other and have our privacy and share our common areas or whatever. But when we do it, we're gonna actually know from experience what we faced, you know, uh, what challenges we faced. And because everything is changing so rapidly, um, then, then a bigger model for us, like a, a, an ego view model, like is what I feel you guys have, will, will eventually take place in a bigger, broader scale. And then government people can start like strategizing by, by being informed in this way. I think it's important that this gets to the people that are also making those decisions at a broader, bigger impact, like people that are designing cities and so forth, no? But for sure, we'll start transitioning to moving into this direction. And I think it's gonna be maybe, yeah, maybe a hundred years. But first we'll take some other steps before we finalize getting that. Another project that is very interesting is the, the one in Florida, um, the Venus project. He also had a very interesting uh, proposal. Mm, so, Let's see what steps we can take now to build upon a, this, this new way we all have to, to embrace. Thank you so much. <laughs> I saw that Sherry had also written uh, something in the chat. Uh, Sherry, would you like to come on? Sure, um, it's, a, it's a question. Um, I've been sharing your model with other people and the question, first question I always get from people and I'm not very good at answering it. So I would love to hear how you answer it is if it's a resource-based economy, then how are goods and services exchanged and how do you, um, you know, how do you get things made and manufactured and my answer is not satisfactory for, for some people. So I'd like to hear how you respond to that. Okay, so um, the first, uh, let me take some notes. The first term you used is resource-based economy. Um, that, uh, 
that's not how I classify this configuration of society. It is a subclassification of this configuration of society. The Venus Project, uh, you know, one of those other amazing projects out there, uh, popularized this term because that's the term, the primary term Jacques Fresco used to refer to the sort of society that he was describing. He also said you could call it an access-based economy. Again, an economy is a sub system of the decision system and uh we are we are if we're looking at this from a systems level perspective uh you could classify the economy in more ways than just resource based and in fact you have to and the decision system does that it's not only recess resource based it's access based it's systems based because in the social system we have a primary approach the systems methodology and then it's participatory based now, so that's just, we're just talking about the term resource-based economy. That confuses a lot of people because every economy is resource-based, right? In fact, TVP, uh, the Venus Project, tried to trademark that term, and the United States government said that's too common of a term. You can't trademark that term. Uh, so we're first not just talking about an economy that's resource-based. As soon as you use that, most economists will, most economists don't, market economists don't really, you know, won't no most people most people won't understand what we're describing if you use that term again we're referring to a specific configuration of society with uh, a specific configuration of four primary systems and this the operation of this society how we get our needs met can only be understood in its entirety if one understands these four systems especially somebody who has been brought up in this market state society so the, first of all, the, the, there's the term resource-based economy, which can lead to, confu lead to a confusion. The best, because, uh, the best thing to talk about in terms of economy is just to give the simple definition of economy, which is agnostic of the market and agnostic of how the way resources are distributed and accessed in the community configuration of society. So an economy is just the acquisition and transformation of resources into needed goods and services. And a community Community type configuration needs are uh, categorized in economic calculation and needs are accounted for throughout the whole system, uh, from the social system to decisioning, where they become requirements, to uh, the material system, where they become habitat services. So you have a, a different approach. Uh, and uh, so in a community type configuration, you have uh, a social organization that is similarly unified because they have a similar set of understandings um, and a similar set of objectives, values, and those understandings include needs, and those needs become requirements, those values become objectives in decisioning. You can see how a market state economist could begin getting confused here because it is a very different way of organizing society. And in order to get to this new organization, there is obviously the requirement for a transition. It is a different configuration. Uh, needs are met through a different information system and a different material environment. So in the market state, you have wants. And uh, you want something and you can either afford it and you can purchase it or you can't afford it and you can't purchase it. In community, there aren't really wants. There are preferences in terms of wants. You have categories of needs, which economic calculation can be done on. And then you, you have solutions that incorporate those need analyses and uh, final design solution that meet those needs. And within there, there's customization. That customization is referred to as preference. This is discussed in the decision system. So there aren't really wants. There are needs and then there are preferences. Uh, so, again, a market economist will have a very difficult time with all of this. The, how do we get anything in modern society? We have a social organization, we have decisionings, and then we have a material uh, materialization service known as production uh, or manufacturing that produces the objects, essentially, that are located in cities, towns, villages, population centers that we refer to as technology and the various services.
So you can see how uh, complex this can get, because if you want to understand the actual operation of the system, one has to understand the operation of this new configuration of society, and that can sometimes take time. Now, how do people get access to, now I'll just answer simply, how do people in a community type configuration uh, of society get access to um, those objects that fulfill their needs and preferences. So uh, let's it, let's just imagine that there was no market state and we're all living in a habitat service. We're all living in a community type configuration, in a habitat service system. You're living in a habitat. I'm living in a habitat. We're all living in a habitat and resources are shared around those habitats. You then have uh, a habitat service system team that is responsible uh, for master planning that habitat and that master uh, th that's primarily working groups although it's made up of also people working in that habitat on, on habitat teams those people working in habitat teams would be the type of people uh, that construct our houses that maintain parts of our, our infrastructure um, that do various operations in our cities the same type of people except it's the so we have people working physically, maintaining, constructing things, doing things, um, the while too, if they're doing mining operations away from our habitat. Um, and then people working in working groups. And some of the people in working groups are working on the master plan for that local habitat. And some of those people are in working groups working on regional economic distribution plans, again, discussed. Lost you. Yeah, it's got frozen. Maybe they can hear, and maybe it's if you can stop the sharing, your bandwidth will be improved. But I think, yeah, they'll come back. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. That it's more complex than I was making it out to be, clearly. Uh, Travis, you're on mute somehow. Yes, uh, it's simplex. Uh, to actually, so you, so when I say simple, you can describe it simply. There are habitat service teams and there are working group members, and those people contribute to the operation of a network of habitat services in which resources are held as the common good and solutions are calculated in conjunction with an economic calculation system, a programmatic algorithmic economic calculation system, and local uh, populations. And uh, we have technology just like we have now. Now, except it's applied directly toward human need fulfillment without all of the abstractions present in the market state. And the people living in uh, a community type society have a specific information set that they uh, perceive reality with, and that facilitates navigation together and the taking uh, and resolving of decisions together that are aligned with our highest state of fulfillment. That's very simple. But then if you begin talking about the complex, um, where can we put the, if you begin then talking about the complex operation, then somebody has to do some, um, you know, some actual work themselves, which can be very difficult now when after people go through the schooling system to bring themselves up to speed on a complex topic. Um, that can sometimes be challenging. And it is challenging to understand this without somebody helping another. For, you know, sometimes I think of how easy this is, but it's also so complex. You know, it took years in order to develop this documentation. So it can take a lot. I mean, it took me a long time to understand. It took decade to really full, fully come to a, a unified information system and an understanding how we could all live this way. So there is, it's simplex. Somebody, and you can visualize it like, um, you know, somewhat simply too. Again, the best way to understand it will be in the future when we have a VR experience and we can give people that VR experience. Right now, it's just having somebody explain it to you and then you going off and thinking, and then someone going off and thinking for a long time or reading a large part of the documentation or spending time, medit you know, Know, mentating on the models um so yeah. no, i can you. try compliment travis in, in this sense in terms of production uh 
I think the point is with our Avona proposal is about the values because all societies based upon to work, you know, the workers produce, you know, produces everything in terms of like the, um, uh, the profit today. So when we, we understand our values, when we, we have like the orientation, the workers will still producing, but like toward our direction to meet our needs. So, yeah, I think. Yeah, values are very important in this, which is why they were the, actually the first uh, the first part of the entire standard was uh, my work on on values and basically coming to a greater understanding of what values would orient us because value values in the in the in a social system social conscious information system, you know, essentially orient all of our decisions. And uh, then in the decision system, those values become objectives. Um, and then they become operationalized in the material system. Yeah, no, I would like to ask Sherry if it's like a bit clear. Yes, it is. It's, it's much more clear. Thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you.